Tyler, please read the problem for us so we can make sure we have the same subject. Okay. Sure. A hungry bear. Okay, hold up. We have a hungry bear. Keep going. Weighing 700 newtons. Ooh, hold up. It weighs 700 newtons. So this is the force of gravity acting on the hungry bear. So what was it? 700? Yep. Okay. Walks out on a beam in an attempt to retrieve a basket of food hanging at the end of the beam. <laughs> the beam is uniform, weighs 200 newtons. Hold up. So 200 newtons is the force of gravity of the beam. Note that's not the bear. It's the hungry bear. <laughs> and it is six meters long. Okay. The basket weighs 80 newtons. Hold up. 80 newtons. Note, it's not a basket. <laughs> oh, man. Because we have basket, beam, and bear. <laughs> it, food. No, no. Goodies. Yeah, you look at the picture. Yeah, we're good. putting a subscript of goodies. Goodies. <laughs> <laughs> this is the force of gravity. <laughs> goodies. <laughs> is 80 correct? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> a, draw a free body diagram for the beam. B, when the bear is at x equals 1.00 meters, find the tension in the wire and the components of the force exerted by the wall on the left end of the beam. C, what if, if the wire can withstand a maximum tension of 900 newtons, what is the maximum distance the bear can walk before the wire breaks? And okay. The bear it doesn't say that. Well, it's Wire breaks into. It's no, it's not. It's, 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 it's water. There's nice, cozy water in these cool. <laughs> So, we now have our subscripts. Please draw your free body diagram, etc. All right, so let's get a free body diagram. Let's make sure that everybody agrees on the free body diagram because if you don't have that right, you're not going to get it right. Emily, please give me some forces in our free body diagram. You have the tension. And then you have the force of gravity on the goodies at the right end. Okay, we have the force of gravity acting on the goodies, which is at the very end. And then you have the force of gravity acting on the beam, which is in the center. Okay, so the force of gravity on the beam itself, which is, as you said, right in the middle. And then you have the force of gravity on the hungry bear, which would be a meter from the left end. Okay. The force of gravity acting on the hungry bear. So if this is three, no, wait, three meters or six meters. So that makes this 3.0 meters here, and makes you said this is one meter. Yeah. One meter away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep going. And then you have the horizontal force of the wall on the beam going to the right. Okay. So you're saying that there is a horizontal force to the right from the wall. What am I going to call it? All right. This is the reaction force in the x direction. And then you have the reaction force in the y direction. We also have a reaction force in the y direction. Now, this is the reaction force from the pin on this, that is acting on this beam. Now, the truth of the matter is that there's a reaction force which probably acts somehow in this direction. But we don't know its direction, so what we do is we have the components of the reaction force. They're in the x and the y direction. And the truth is, we might not even be sure of the direction of these reaction forces. It seems pretty clear that the reaction force in the x direction is going to be to the right to counteract the tension force in the x direction, which is going to be to the left. It also would make sense that the reaction force would need to be up in the y direction, because if you think about this as an axis of rotation, the whole thing would go down, so something needs to be pulling it up. So it makes sense that these would be the correct directions for the reaction force. There might be a time when you look at a situation and you don't know, you're not really sure which direction that you should choose. So you pick one, and what happens if you were wrong? You're just going to get an answer which is negative, which means you picked the wrong direction for your reaction force. Okay. So we now have a free body diagram. Please, some of the torques. Pick an axis of rotation figure out the tension. Dorf said, which is, what is a logical place for the lever arm? The left end. Why the left end? I agree that's where the wall is, but where, why is this the logical place to put the axis of rotation? Because then the 
reaction forces that would cancel out the solid ground? It cancels out the torque due to the reaction forces, right? So if you pick that as your axis of rotation, the lever or the torque due to those two reaction forces are zero, as you said, because the lever arms are zero. Good. All right, I want to start walking through this on the board. Uh, Nitish, you guys feel free to keep working. Nitish, help me figure out the directions of our torques. The lever arm for both the reaction forces is zero, so those are both zero. What about the torque due to the force of gravity of the hungry bear? It's um, into the, well, R. Well, actually, start with the axis rotation. Oh, yeah. Then lever arm. Lever arm, force. Note that's the same for the force of gravity of the hungry bear, force of gravity of the beam, and the force of gravity of the goodies. So all of these are into the board and negative. What about the torque due to the tension force? Where do I start? At the axis of rotation. And then lever arm. Tension. In order to curl my fingers in the direction of the tension, I have to flip my hand upside down and curl my fingers in the direction of the tension, which is out of the board. Nitish is positive. Positive. All right, from left to right, please give me all of the numbers. Catherine, the lever arm for the hungry bear. Uh, one. One, the force of gravity of the hungry bear. 700, the angle for the hungry bear? Uh, 90. Minus the lever arm for the beam? 3. Force of gravity for the beam? 200. The lever arm, I'm sorry, the theta for the beam? 90. Minus the lever arm for the goodies? 6. The entire length of the beam, force of gravity of the goodies? Uh, 80. Times the sine of? 90. Plus the lever arm for the tension? 6. Times tension, which is what we're solving for, times the sine of the angle for the tension? 60 degrees. Note that's the angle between the tension and the lever arm. The lever arm would be right there as it is in fact 60 degrees. Which means we can solve for the tension force. We get what? Independent confirmation, 342.56? Yeah, yeah. All right. So 343 newtons is the tension force. We're also supposed to figure out the reaction force in the x and y direction. How are we going to do that, Mr. P? We will sum the forces. Go ahead. In the y direction. We'll start by summing the forces in the y direction. Go ahead. We have the reaction force in the y direction. Yep. The force of gravity on the repair, the force of gravity on the Oh, and force of tension in the y direction. Or just tension. Tension, um, well, it has to be tension in the y direction. Yeah. Um, force of gravity, all three of them will be negative. And the other two will be positive. That's equal to? Uh, MA is zero. The acceleration in the y direction is, of course, equal to zero. Uh, we're looking for the reaction force in the y direction, so that's equal to the force of gravity of the hungry bear plus the force of gravity of the beam plus the force of gravity of the goodies uh, minus the tension force in the y direction. What's the equation for the tension force in the y direction, Nick? T sine theta. Let me see if I agree with you. Theta is right here. Sine so is sine is positive or hypotenuse, so yes. I would agree with you. The reaction force in the y direction, force of gravity of the hungry bear. Is he 700? Yeah. The bear is really 700? Okay. Plus <laughs> the beam, which is 200, plus the goodies, which is 80, minus the tension, which we got to be 342.56, multiplied by the sine of 60. All of that equals the reaction force in the y direction, which is? 683.3 repeating. Yes? Yeah. All right. So 683 newtons. We can now sum the forces in the x direction to figure out the reaction force in the x direction, Vlad. All right. We're going to have Rx. Uh, we're going to have tension in the x direction. That's it. True. I mean, positive and negative is what it's equal to. You know how it is. Come on. Uh, Rx is positive, and tension Equals? Zero. Mass times the acceleration in the x direction, which is equal to zero. Therefore, we get the reaction force in the x direction equals tension in the x direction, 
what is tension in the x direction play? Equation tension in the x. T. Well, it's just tension times cosine of theta. So reaction force in the x direction was 342.56 times the cosine of the 60 degrees. What do we get for reaction force in the x direction, please? 171.28. 171 newtons. That is part B. Moment. Um, I understand the problem, but why would like a string break over the edge of something have like a bearing on force of gravity is on the B? Which string are you referring to? This tension force or the force of gravity that goes? Um, why would they have a bearing on okay. the B? The question is, what does this <laughs> string do? Right? That's essentially, what, why does this string affect things? Okay. So, Tyler, yes. answer the question. What happens if we take out a scissors and we cut this? It's going to fall down, and the bear's going to fall. <laughs> right? This, this right here is making it so that this whole beam is staying here. Without this, the whole thing's going to fall down. Okay. Oh, is the string attached to the beam? Oh, yeah, the string's attached to the beam. Ah, it's hence the confusion. It. No, it's not draped over it. It's, it has to be attached. If it weren't, yeah, you're right. I mean, if it weren't attached here, <laughs> then it would just, yeah, it would get up. <laughs> hence the confusion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, now I, now I understand where the question's coming from. Flat. Would that hedge, if that was farther out, would it give more support to it? Would yeah, if this, if this point right here? Yeah, if it was farther out. It would give kind of a different support to it. The, the, it would just be the torque would be around a different point. But it still wouldn't be able to sustain itself without the tension. Uh, it, actually, you would get to a point where it, you could, probably could sustain it without without the tension. Well, I guess I'd have to figure it out whether it would sustain it without the tension. I'm not depend on the wood. Sure. Yeah, they would they depend on several things. Okay, we're not done yet. Part uh, C, I believe, was to figure out uh, what was it. What if. Oh, the, the what if. So if the tension maximum, if we're going to cut the string at uh, four, two, 900 newtons in this wire, how far out can the bear walk? So really that brings us back to this step right here, but it changes things. The only thing that changes is we no longer know the distance the bear has come out, and we do know the tension. So we're going to come back to this point right here, and we're going to plug in different numbers. So now, for part C, we know the maximum tension, and we're looking for the maximum distance he can walk out. So really, it's we just have negative x times 700 multiplied by the sine of 90 uh, minus everything else is the same, 200 times the sine of 90. Uh, minus 6 times 80 times the sine of 90 minus or plus 6 times the tension which is now the maximum of 900 times the sine of 60. walk out before he does not get to the goodies. So I think that does make any sense, right? Okay. Right. Good. I mean but <laughs> but Five point one three seven nine. Independent confirmation. Five point one three seven nine. Yes. Five point one four meters. Ah, sorry, I don't know. I don't get So I guess it's hard to say whether he does get the goodies because he's he's within he's less than a meter away and he might be able to reach. Depends how he's leaning when the whole thing breaks. But I don't. Know. You're gonna have to imagine that one on your own.